With me is the boxing and sports commentator Ronald McIntosh to talk about the sportsman and the legend. And I suppose, Ronald, specifically to talk about his technique, what was it that made him so distinctive in the ring? As a heavyweight, I think it was the combination of speed and grace that he was able to bring to the heavyweight ranks. At that time, in the 20th century, for a large portion of the 20th century, the heavyweight championship of the world was singularly the most important title in all of sports. But it was previously the preserve and the domain of the biggest men in boxing, sluggers, heavy hitters, punchers. There were a few guys who possessed footwork that was notable. Jack Johnson, the Galveston giant, the first black heavyweight champion of the world. But Muhammad Ali brought to the heavyweight division the skills of a welterweight, the skills of a lightweight, the ability to glide around the ring as though he's on roller skates as fluid as mercury and then dazzling hand speed as well and evading punches rather than demonstrating his toughness by absorbing punches. Just a remarkable set of skills that hadn't been seen in the heavyweight before. And the, there were those who kind of were a bit sort of uh, negative about this approach, weren't there? Most certainly because boxers who had come before that they demonstrated their toughness by absorbing the blows and giving out shellacking punches of their own. Joe Lewis in particular, flat-footed, devastating combination puncher, devastating knockout puncher. But Muhammad Ali, his whole thing was that during his prime on his ascent to the title, which he won in 1964, and before he was forced to exile from boxing in 1967, he was simply untouchable. If you want to see Muhammad Ali at perhaps his physically most imposing then try and dig out the fight where he fought a boxer by the name of Cleveland Williams and it's simply poetry in motion to see a man of that size move with that agility and give out punches epitomizing the art of boxing hitting without being hit. I was reading something a little earlier in an article that's quoted today in the New Yorker this is something that was written at the time of the 1960 Olympics when of course he won his gold as, as an amateur. Uh, AJ Liebling who uh, was one of the most distinguished of boxing writers you'd, you'd know very well uh, and well Dallas have read his stuff before he said clay cassis clay as he then was had a, a skittering style like a pebble scaled over water he was good to watch but seemed to make only glancing contact and there's a sort of sense that somehow this wasn't quite proper i think in heavyweight terms that's exactly how a lot of purists and aficionados regarded it but what veterans of the boxing room will tell you is that the punch that's most likely to get you out of there inside the distance is the punch that you do not see now, Muhammad Ali was so quick and he de delivered his punches in such rapid fire fashion that he could deliver a bunch of these punches in a flash and the big, tough, hulking pugs would wind up flat, dazed and confused at his feet on the canvas. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not even going to try and emulate his style of delivery, but this is what he said uh, when he regained the title uh, from George Foreman in 74, the second of their three matches. He said, now you see me, now you don't. George thinks he will, but I know he won't. I done wassled with an alligator, I done tussled with a whale, only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalised a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine <laughs> sick. I mean, the whole kind of charisma of the man was part of the performance. How much do you think that kind of uh, disorientated his opponents? I think he perhaps had a method of unsettling his opponents, making them so mad, particularly the, the, the rivalry he had with Joe Frazier. Ahead of his third contest, a thrill in Manila, which was incredibly hard, his personal physician, Dr. Ferdi, Dr. Ferdi Pacheco, went over, watched Frazier train, and said, listen, Frazier's not washed up. This guy's for real. He's coming to compete really hard. And all of the taunts that Ali was labeling at Joe Frazier, Ali thought would make him angry, take him out of his game and his thought process was the madder he gets the easier it will be so when he came up with all these nicknames the predictions the dog roll the rhyming I'm sure for a lot of it was to try and unseat and unsettle the person that he was trying to box because then he would get so angry lose control and fall into his game plan on some opponents it worked on some of them it didn't but he was so skillful that and so inventive and so imaginative that more often than not he found a way to win do you stay too long in the ring do you think that's a difficult question to answer. I think from a fan's perspective, he most certainly boxed on beyond, beyond his prime, beyond his best years. But I think as a fighter, that was who he was. It was his essence. He was incredibly obdurate, incredibly tough, incredibly stubborn, allied with all of this brilliant skill. But he was a fighter at his essence. And Ray Leonard said the other day, the toughest battle boxers often face is against themselves because you're asking them to give up a huge part of themselves when you're asking them to step away from the boxing ring. So while we may have, as fans, have wanted him to give up after the Foreman fight in Zaire or after the third Frazier fight in Manila, I think he had to see how much he could extract from himself. And let's face it, by continuing, 
he climbed the mountaintop a third time by losing and then regaining the title to Leon Spinks. But yeah, most certainly carried on past his physical prime. But I think ultimately he went out on his own terms. Ronald McIntosh, boxing commentator. Thank you so much you. for that fascinating insight into the technique and the talent of Muhammad Ali. Thank you.